Alright, welcome to youth group. Are you guys glad you are here tonight? Yes, I'm glad you're here tonight too. Looking forward to a great night uh, with you guys, fellowshipping, getting into the Word of God, giving you guys some things that are coming up here uh, this new month. It's October. It's, it's October already. Oh my goodness. Does it seem like the years are just flying by, the months are going by quickly, and we have how many more days till... <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> to the all-nighter! <laughs> We're not there yet. Don't jump the gun. Slow down. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. <laughs> All right. Well, it's glad to see you guys tonight. We'll probably have some more people coming in shortly, and we'll fill this room up once again. It's good to see you here uh, tonight. Uh, let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. We'll get into some announcements. And before you know it, we're going to get into uh, the, the message tonight and uh, have a great, uh, great lesson for you guys. Something I know will encourage you, so we're looking forward to that. All right, let's open up in prayer. All right, dearly Father, again, we thank you for tonight, Lord. I thank you for all that you're doing in the lives of these teenagers, Lord. I thank you for just a great group that you bring faithfully every single Wednesday night. Lord, I pray that you'd be with uh, our session here tonight. I pray that you'd be with the adults in the main service with all the kids' classes going on and all the ministries that are speaking to people's lives, Lord. I pray that you continue to do great work. Dear Lord, we think of just how exciting this upcoming year, remaining year is going to be with the Harvest Fair and Christmas experience, with the youth activities and just everything that's going on, dear Lord. I pray that you'd uh, just do a great work through it, dear Lord. Again, we thank you for tonight. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. <coughs> all right, real quickly, some things we got coming up, things for you guys to know out. There's a lot of information back there on the counter. So make sure you make yourselves aware of that. So we have this coming Saturday, uh, we're going to have our family and teen soul winning at 9 a.m. with a breakfast. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. All right. All right. This side was really happy. You guys didn't seem so happy about it. Oh, yeah. Let's, 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 yeah, let's be a little more into it, okay? All right. All right. Oh, I'm going to have to move you guys back over there and bring them back here. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We'll see how you do on this next one, okay? All right, so the next thing we have coming on, um, let's see, is the Teen All Nighter! <laughs> All right, better. That's much better. Good. Brought that up pretty good. All right, so that's October 20th, October 20th, which is just a little bit over two weeks away. So for you to be able to go, and we got 70 spots committed, 70 spots available for you guys. So you got to register. To register, you have to put down your 75 bucks, okay? 75 bucks gets you on the list. There's also a little registration uh, uh, form that you need to go. Has anybody been to Extreme Flipping Out? Yeah. Oh, good number. Good, good. All right. So just a little detail, just to give you a little information. Um, if you've already gone there this year, what year is it? 2023. <laughs> Some of you are like, what? 2023. So if you've gone this year, then you're good. You don't have to register. But if you haven't gone, and this will be the first time you ever go to Extreme Flipping Out, and you're going to go to the Teen All Nighter, you need to register with them. And I have a little piece of paper that gives you step by step by step by st Okay, you get the point, right? Instructions on how to register and get yourself on there, all right? So that's 75 bucks from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah, all night long. Do we get to sleep and take naps? No! No, no we do excitement nonstop. The whole entire night, we'll have a great message and challenge for you guys that night. And look forward to when we get out and uh, get into our vehicles and just go from place to place to place. Uh, before you know it, you're going to be like, wow, it's 7 a.m. Let's keep going. Maybe not. No, maybe not. No, I'll probably be sleeping till Sunday or till 5 or, five, five or 6 o'clock that night. All right, so that's coming up. Looking forward to that. Again, there's a flyer back there. There's registration if, you, if your parents do have credit card or cash or check we can take all those back there and get you hooked up get you signed up for that also our seniors seniors so our seniors gonna be doing a bake sale uh raising money for their senior trip so if you're interested you want to help if you want to help your the <coughs> the seniors and you want to be a part of what they're doing and then you'll enjoy baking if you would like to bake something for uh, the seniors for the bake sale and donate it to them, uh, they would be gladly take that uh, gift that you would give them and then try to sell it to uh, during Harvest Fair. 
and help them raise money for their senior trip. So if you enjoy baking and you want to be a help to them, encourage them and uh, partner with them, um, we'll ask you guys to bake something, bring it on Harvest Fair Sunday, and uh, we'll see how God will bless all those great things that you guys do. So if you want to be part of that, uh, we have a flyer back there for you as well that has all the details and time and, and what you need to do. That could be available to you as well. Um, the other thing we got coming up is, if you want to interested, we, we mentioned this last week. If you're interested, and this is for juniors and seniors, if you're interested in going to a, a PCC College Days trip and you have an interest in possibly going to Pensacola Christian College uh, on, uh, in April uh, 3rd through the 5th, we're going to be taking a trip out there to go and visit the college. So this is something you weren't here last week and you missed it. Just wanted to give that invite to you. If you do are interested, I want you to see my wife, Grave Hellison. There she is, right there? Yes. All right, go see her, and then you can get registered with her, okay? Um, other than that, that's all I have, okay? All right, so those are the announcements. If you have any more questions, any more detail on that, I'll be back there uh, at the end of service tonight, and I can answer those questions or take care of payments and take over all those things so that you guys know exactly what's going on. All right, sound good? Good, all right, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our offering now. We're gonna take our offering, so we'll have our ushers get in place, we'll pray, and then we'll have, uh, uh, I'll take our offering, and then we'll get into tonight's message, all right? Let's pray. Dearly Father, again, we thank you for tonight, dear Lord. I pray that you continue to bless uh, these teenagers tonight, dear Lord. Thank you for those faithful ones who are uh, tithing and giving an offering, dear Lord, uh, and how you've blessed them, uh, whether that's through a job <coughs> or an allowance, Dear Lord, if you've, uh, if you've blessed them with that and they're uh, dedicating that money uh, as an offering to you, dear Lord, I pray that you would pour a blessing out in their lives. Dear Lord, I pray that that offering would come in and be able to help further uh, uh, this youth group, uh, the ministry here at Liberty Baptist Church and around the world, dear Lord, through our missions. Dear Lord, I pray that you do it in great and mighty ways. Dear Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing. Dear Lord, I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. Exodus chapter number 34 this evening. Exodus chapter number... 34 is where we're going to start tonight. Uh, man, it's been a while since I've been up here. It's been a long time, and I have, I have missed you guys. I really have. Um, let me ask you to do a couple things. Number one, number one, before we get into this message, uh, a few things, in fact. Um, uh, number one, if you're a gentleman in here, do me a favor, out of respect to the preaching of God's word, if you're wearing a hat, if you have a hoodie on, do me a favor, um, remove that. And that's just for respect for the preaching of God's word. Appreciate that um, there. Secondly, secondly, um, I have, I have this, uh, this announcement, this uh, or request. It's really, it's, it's, it's a request uh, that I have um, there. Uh, this is a room full of able-bodied, very sharp teenagers young adults right are you with me with me this is not it's not a room full of um six-year-olds and seven-year-olds we're not a bunch of elementary schoolers we are junior high and high school um young men and young ladies so do me a favor do me a favor use the facilities before church starts so do me a favor don't don't interrupt don't 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 interrupt during the message, now I know I, I just made this announcement today, so if you have to go, I, I mean, don't go in your pants, you know, but, uh, but, but really, really, I mean, it's just, it's just courteous to the speaker, it's just courteous to the people that are sitting by you, do me that favor, and then lastly, lastly, um, I, I just want to make this announcement before, before I speak and before I get into the Word of God is this, in a room this size, in a room this size, in a room with this many teenagers, with this many people, we have, I realize that we have people in all different areas of life spiritually. Uh, you understand that, right? That, that we, we are. We're, we're at different maturity levels spiritually. We're at different places in our lives. There are um, some in here that are hungry for the word of God. There are some in here that are hungry for the, for the preaching and the teaching. And there are some that are not so much. They haven't developed an appetite maybe for, for those things yet. And what I would say to you is this. If you are 
if you're that person that maybe you haven't developed that appetite, maybe you're not that excited. When, when, when Mr. Halverson came back to talk to me and to, to hand me the microphone, um, he said, man, you're going to have like 45 minutes to preach. And I was like, I only wrote a 30 minute message, but no worries. I will fill 45 minutes. So there, there's some of you that, that when, when you hear that are like, oh no. 45 minutes of preaching, oh my God, and that's okay. I, this is what I want to say to you. If that's you, if that's you, this is what I want to say to you. Number one, I love you very sincerely. I mean that. I love you. The reason I'm here is because I love you. Number two, I'm glad that you are here. I really am. Because I believe that the longer you're here and the more you're here, the more you will see, you will, the scripture puts it like this, taste and see that the Lord is, what is it? He's good. He's good. So, number one, I love you. Number two, I'm, I'm glad that you are here. I'm glad that you are here. And number three, here's what I would ask you to do for me. Personal favor. Out of respect to me, out of respect to me, and out of respect for God's word, would you, for the next half an hour, would you, for the next 45 minutes, would you do your best to pay attention? Just listen. Just listen. And I'll tell you this. It's also out of respect for the people that are sitting next to you. For the people sitting next to you. Well, I know the people sitting next to me, and they're just like me. You don't know that. Really, you don't. You don't know their hearts. Nobody knows their hearts except them and the Lord. That's it. So do me that favor. Can you, can you, do, that? Can you do that for me? If you can do that for me, nod your head. Nod your head. All right. All right. Good. Good. All right. Very good. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Let's pray. Actually, let's, let's, let's all stand. Let's all stand out of respect for the reading of God's Word. Exodus 34 is where we're going to start. We're going to start a series of messages entitled, what's it called? Shine. It's entitled Shine. It's entitled Shine. Here's what I want to talk to you over the next four weeks. Over the next four weeks, I want to talk to us about how to light the world with our lives. How to light the world with our lives. This isn't on. I'm going to move it. How to light the world with our lives. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to look at two verses of scripture or two portions of scripture and uh, then after that I'm going to pray and after I'm done praying you can be seated so after I'm done praying what can you do be seated. yes be seated or sit down that's right that's right Exodus 34 and verse number 35 um, it's on your screens there if you don't have it the Bible says this it says and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses whose face did they see Moses, Moses. anyone know what Moses was doing at this point Anyone know what, what Moses was doing? Shout it out if you know. He was talking to God. He was. In fact, he was getting something from God. He was downloading something from the cloud onto a tablet. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, thank you. Thank you. It was, he, was getting, he was getting the commandments. He was getting the commandments. So he was spending time with God. He was spending time with Jesus. He was spending time with Jehovah God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He was spending time with God. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. It shone. It was shiny. It wasn't like shiny like because he had bad skin. It shone with the glory of God. And Moses put a veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. This is amazing. He walked with Jesus and his face shone. Here's a, an Old Testament example of what walking or what seeing God did. In the New Testament, Jesus came down. He veiled his glory. And let's look. Let's look at this next portion of scripture. Acts 4.13. Acts 4.13, if you have your Bibles, if not, it's on the screens. You can just look at the screens. The Bible says this in Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, of who? Peter and John. Peter and John. When they saw the people, 
The people that they were ministering to, the people that they were with, the people that they were preaching to, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. So they had spent time with them. Logan, this is amazing. They had spent time with them, and after spending time with them, they were like, these are unlearned men. These are not, these are not smart people. These are not doctors. These are not, um, they're, they're, they're not politicians. These are not, these are not educated people. They are ignorant men. So they saw these people with no great talent, no great ability. They perceived that they were ignorant men, and then it says this. They marveled. They marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with who? Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Trey, think about that. These guys, there was nothing spectacular about them. In fact, the impression that they made on these people was that they were ignorant. The impression that they made on the people that they were ministering to was that they were unlearned. That they were not smart people. That's the impression that they made. And yet, and yet, something about them, something about their lives lit up their world. And people said, wow, even though they're ignorant, even though they're unlearned, God is using them. It's obvious that they have been with Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We love you, God, because you first loved us. We love you, Lord, because you offer us salvation rich and free. We love you, Father, because you sent your Son to die on the cross. We love you, Jesus, because you became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We love you, Holy Spirit, because you're willing to fill and control these wretched bodies. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. We praise you and we lift you up and we ask right now that you'd speak to our hearts. I pray, God, that you would hide me behind your cross and I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified tonight. I pray, God, that you would shine forth in this room and I pray, God, that teenagers, that adults would make a decision to live a life that would light this world. We ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In these verses that we just examined, and you, if you have your Bibles and you're following along, you can turn to Genesis chapter 2 because the rest of the message will be in Genesis chapter number 2. We'll reference these two verses at the beginning of each week, but we'll be in Genesis 2 for this entire series. But we read in these verses about three people who stood out. One of them, like we pointed out, lived during the Old Testament, and two of them were local church Christians. You say, what's a local church Christian? I'm a local church Christian. I am a Christian. I'm a Christ follower. I'm a person who's trusted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, who's living during a time where God is using the local church, where the local church is God's chosen plan to reach this world and to accomplish his mission. So I'm a local church Christian. If you're in here, then you too, if you're a believer, are a local church Christian. So we read about an Old Testament real person. I don't like to say character because he's a real person that really lived. And two, local church Christians who lived extraordinary lives. Even though they lived in different centuries and different places and had very different lives. They had different ambitions. They had different goals. They had different assignments from God. All three of them lit up the world with their lives. They, they shone a light. They allowed God to use them in such a way that the light of Christ shined. Now, before we get into this study, before we, b before we start learning about the true source of light and how to get it, I think it's important to take a moment to explain that Satan, Satan, the enemy, the devil, the world, okay, Satan 
offers a generic light. In fact, Satan offers a cheap knockoff. This is what the devil does. The devil takes what is good, and he says, I, I can do it too. That's, that's what he said, right? That's what he said. He said, I will be like the most high God. He was filled with pride, and that's, that's what he did. So I, I want to take a minute to, to acknowledge the fact this, that, 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 that the, devil, the devil does offer a knockoff. He does offer a generic version of the light. Um, perhaps you've heard this term. Maybe you've heard this term, it factor, the it factor. You ever heard that? Maybe you've heard this, that person has got it. You ever heard that said about somebody? Maybe you've said that about somebody. Oh, they got it. That person, they're going to go places. They're going to go places. You can, you can tell they have that it factor. When people are talking about it, when people say that someone has it, it means this. It means that they possess a charisma or a magnetism that not everyone possesses. In fact, very few possess people possess it. So many people are trying to achieve it. Why are people trying to achieve it? Why? Because the devil has lied to the world and said, listen, if you want to be happy, you need to have it. You need to have it, and you need to have this it factor, when the reality is very few people have it. What is it? It is something that makes a person stand out, and it puts a light on them, but it doesn't provide a light for others. See, this is a big difference. Watch this. Follow me. When people talk about having the it factor, they talk about a person that other people want to shine a light on and people want to talk about, and people want to know about, and it puts a light on them. The true light doesn't do that. We'll see that here in just a minute. Let me illustrate this for you. Dominic, let me, let me illustrate this for you. In the, and I know most of you, for, mo for most of you, this is going to be old, but it'll, it'll, it, you'll catch up to it here at the end. In the, in the early 2000s, the world was, was filthy rich with boy bands. You can put the next light up there. There were, there, there were boy bands. Boy bands were boy bands were all the rage. This is no one super cool, but uh, but th there were boy bands and there were tons of boy bands. There were there were tons of boy bands. Um, the Backstreet Boys. There were um, there were um, there was N Sync, N Sync, bye bye bye. All right. So so there was there were there were there were boy bands and and people love the boy bands. Now uh, in fact I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you for a second about N Sync about NSYNC. NSYNC was, was very popular. In fact, in 2001, they were, they were probably, it's debatable. It's debatable. In fact, I read articles this week that argued both for Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. But arguably, NSYNC was the number one boy band in 2001. In 2001, they were arguably, they had the moves, they had the looks, they had the, the songs, they were, they were cool, they were hip. Um, NSYNC was at the top of the world. NSYNC featured the vocals and cool dance moves of five very talented dudes. Chris, Joey, Lance, JC, and who knows the fifth one? Justin. Justin. And Justin, right? And, and that was your daughter, Kyle. <laughs> that, was, that was your daughter. All right. I know what Kyle's listening to on the way to church. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. All right. So, so that, 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 was, that was in sync. Now, in 2001, watch this, follow me. Very talented dudes, very talented dudes. They could all dance, they all had the choreography, they could all sing. In 2001, something happened to NSYNC. In 2001, in 2001, Justin said, you know, the music is changing, I'm not feeling it anymore. I think I want to go solo. And here was, here, was, here was the thing. Here was the thing. Even if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Even if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Because you're like, you're like, you're like I was born in 2005. You know, like, like I, have, I, have no, I, have, I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. You know, even today, you know who Justin is. You know, would you put, put that next slide up there. You know this guy. You know this guy. Some of you, some of you know him when I just, if I put this picture up, some of you know him when I put this picture up. Like, you know, 
You, 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 you know. <laughs> Still got the feeling. Right? All right. So you know. You guys know. You know Branch. Solid burn, Branch. Like, Justin Timberlake. Know this. Justin Timberlake has, what does he have? What does he have? He has it. He has it. The girls are like, he's so cute. <laughs> he's old now. He's old now. I know. But look, he has it. He has it. The, you know what happened to the other? The most famous of the other NSYNC guys, they made it to Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Dancing with the Stars is one of those shows where celebrities go to die. <laughs> like, where it's like, it's like we couldn't get real celebrities because real celebrities are busy making movies and, you know, being trolls and doing all this stuff. <laughs> and so we get the washed up celebrities who aren't doing anything else, and they're like, yes, I will come and embarrass myself on TV. That's what, that's what Dancing with the Stars is. Like, they, they, the spotlight was on all of them. But only one of them had it. And only one of them is still famous today. I wanted to take a minute to talk about this because I want to tell you this. The world tells you in order to be valuable, the world tells you in order to be successful, you need to have it. There's very few people that have that. There's very few people. Every single person on NSYNC could sing. They could all dance. They could all do it. Some people have that charisma. Some people have it. And the devil, this is what the devil does. The devil gives you impossible goals that you can never reach to keep you miserable. So when I'm talking about living, shining, I'm not talking about shining like Justin Timberlake. I'm not talking about shining like any celebrity where the light is on them where we want to know all about them, who they're married to, how many kids they have, how, how they're, and we do, and we, we obsess over these people. That's not the light that I'm referring to. And that's not what we're talking about in this message. You can move to the next slide. When I talk about lighting the world with your life, I'm not talking about only a few people who have it. I'm not talking about being able to attract attention so others cast a temporary light on you. I'm talking about living a life so that the true and everlasting light will shine through you and illuminate a dark and desperate world. That's what I'm talking about. Letting this light shine through through you that will illuminate a dark and desperate world. That's what I mean by shining. That's what we're talking about. Before we get into the message and by way of introduction for this series, I think it's important that all of us are on the same page about three things. Three things. Aiden, you go to the next slide. Number one is this, is that the light that gives us the shine that we're talking about, the light that gives us the, the shine to talk about, is not found within us. We need to understand this. Before we get into this series, before we get into this message, we need to understand that the light is not found in me. It's not found in Jose. It's not found in Kendall. It's not found, it's not found in Abby. It's not found in any of us. You cannot produce that kind of light. Why? Why? Because I was born in sin. I was born, the Bible says, with a sin condition. It is inherently found in me. I'm not perfect. I'm unrighteous. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's no good thing in me. All my righteousness are as filthy rags. So this light cannot come from me. It cannot come from your personality. It cannot come from your dashing good looks. It cannot come from your uh, innate sense of style. It doesn't come from being good on social media. It doesn't come from you. Number two, you can go to the next slide, Aiden. Number two, the light that gives us the shine, the light is Jesus. 
The light is Jesus. We know this. John chapter number 1, in the beginning was the... And the Word was... And the Word... And we beheld His glory. As of the glory of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. And the passage goes on to describe Jesus Christ as the... What? Light. That He's the light. It goes on to talk about John the Baptist. And about John the Baptist, it says this, that John the Baptist was not the... But he told of the light, right? The light is Jesus. The light is Jesus. Daniel, if you want the light, it's not in you. It's not in you because like me, you're a sinner and you fall short of the glory of God. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ what? Died for us. He died for us. The Bible says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel by which also you are saved. How that Christ died, on the, uh, died, Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And you know, Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and rose again the third day. Why? So that you could have the light in you. He died so that you could have a relationship with God the Father. Because sin, in your natural state, Carlos, in your natural state, sin separates you from God. But Jesus died so that you can have communion. You can have fellowship with God. Isn't that good news? That is good news. That's great news. The light is Jesus. And Jesus gives you that light through his death, through his burial, and through his resurrection. And if you don't know God today, if you're in here and you're like, "Mm, I don't even understand half this stuff. I don't understand some of it. Let me tell you this. The way to understanding is by coming through Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you can call on Jesus today, and you can learn about the light. Number three, number three is this. This light that we're talking about, as we preach this series, Mikey, as we talk about this, the light that we're talking about points people to Jesus. It doesn't point people to to me. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? The Bible says this. The Bible says that we are to glorify who? We're to glorify God. What does that mean? What does that mean to glorify God? That means this, that our lives point back to God. That our lives point back to Jesus. And the light, the true light, points back to God. Jesus when he taught here on this earth, when he veiled his glory and he, and he taught here on this earth, said, I speak not of myself, but of my Father. I'm not, I'm not giving you my message. I'm giving you the message that my Father gave me. Jesus always points back to the Father. That's what he does. And the light points people to Jesus, the genuine light. That's what it does. Aiden, you go to the next slide. Over the next four weeks, over the next four weeks, we're going, to be, we're going to be answering this question. What can I do to make sure that I'm lighting the world with my life? What is it that I can do as a teenager, as a 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old, as a parent in the back that's years old? What can I do? How, what, what can I do to live a life that lights my world? Over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about that. These are, the, these are the topics that we're going to be talking about. Tonight, tonight, let's examine what God tells us about the first man and woman on earth to learn about walking with Jesus. Tonight, we're going to talk about walking with Jesus and how walking with Jesus will help your life to shine. So, if you're in your Bibles, in Genesis chapter number 2, you can look at your Bibles. If not, Aiden, you can put it up on the screens there. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 is what we're going to read. The Bible says this. We're going to talk about walking with Jesus now. The Bible says this. And the Lord God took the man. The Lord God took the man. This is Adam. And he put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. I'm there. Um, So, 
What do we learn? What do we learn from this passage? What do we learn from this passage about walking with Jesus? What does this really have to do uh, with, with walking with Jesus? It has a whole lot. It has a whole lot. Let me say this. Let me say this because I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this. This is, this is really exciting. So for the next 10 minutes, this is what we're going to be talking about. Okay. Um, there. At this point, had sin entered the world? No. It hadn't. It's not, till, it's not till the next chapter, right? Genesis 3. Genesis 3, sin entered the world. So what we're reading about, think about this. What we're reading about right now is what God intended for humanity here on this earth. This is really cool. This is really cool. When, when man, Noemi, when Noemi, man actually walked with God. They actually walked with Jesus. Well, he walked with God the Father, not with, with Jesus. They were all there. They were all there. In the beginning... The Hebrew says, Elohim. Elohim." It's a plural word. It's a plural word for God. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They were, all, they were all there. They were all there. Remember John 1, we just referenced that. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He was there. So these people, they got to, Adam and Eve, they got to walk with Jesus. They literally got to walk with Jesus. This is so cool. Why is it so cool? Because I get to learn how to walk with Jesus by learning the, by reading their account. I get to learn some things about it. So let's, let's learn. What, what, what lessons do we need to learn? What lessons do we need to learn? Number one is this. Number one is this. Walking with Jesus means listening to his instructions. Walking with Jesus means what? Listening to his instructions. Yeah, listening to his instructions. That's what it means. Look at what it says there in verse 15. It says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. He put the man in the garden. He took the man and he put him into the garden. He, 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 he took him. I don't think that means, watch this. I don't think that means that he... took him and put him in the garden. I don't think that's what it means. I've taken my wife to the movies. I've taken my wife to dinner. I've never picked her up. In fact, there's plenty of times where I've tried to pick her up and she's like, mm-mm. Why? Because I'm so strong. She's afraid I'll just throw her through the, no. <laughs> she's afraid I'm going to fall because I'm clumsy. But I've taken her. How did you take her to the movies? Well, I walked in. I said, are you ready to go yet? No. I <laughs> we talked. I said, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Usually it's her. Are you ready? We got to go. Because I'm on my phone. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. And then we go, and I open the car door for her. And she sits in the car, and we drive together. And then we get out of the car, and we park by the elevator that's by the movies because we know where it's at. We're regulars. We like buttery popcorn. And, and then we walk over. I, I, I open the door for her, and, and I hold her hand. And we walk to the elevator, and we go down the elevator together. And we go, and I pay for the movie tickets, and we pay for the popcorn, and we pay for the bunch of crunch. Unless they're out, they seem to be out of bunch of crunch. A lot. But we'll go and we'll pay for the popcorn and the candy and the soda and then we'll walk hand in hand. And we always stop, you know, you stop and use the restroom because you don't want to be rude and interrupt in the middle of the movie, just like with youth group. You know, and, and, then, and then we go into the movies and I take her to the movies. I don't pick her up and drop her at the movies. I take her to the movies. The Bible says this, that the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden. It's like he said... You got to see this. You got to see this thing that I created for you. You got to see this garden. It's unlike anything else on this earth. Come here. And he took Adam and they talked and they walked and God described it. Oh, the fruits that you're going to see, you're going to enjoy. What's fruit? Oh, I can't, I can't wait for you to see this. And he took him. He took him. See, walking with Jesus means listening to his instruction. 
It means reading his word to listen to where you should go. Reading his word to listen to where you should go. God will tell you where you should go. He'll tell you. When you have questions in life, he'll tell you. How will he tell you? By reading his word. If you read his word, he'll tell you. You say, I don't know. I've read it before and I don't understand it. I'm telling you, keep reading it. He will tell you. Reading his word to listen to what you should do when you get there. That's another aspect of this. It's reading his word to listen to what you should do when you get there. He says this in this verse. He says, And the God and the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, Adam, when we get there, here's what I want you to do. I want you to dress it. I want you to keep it. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to give you a weed whacker. No, he didn't. There was no weeds yet. But he explained to him, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. I've heard, I've heard parents say all the time. In fact, I've, heard, in fact, I've even heard um, experts on this subject talking about having kids and saying, kids, I wish they came with an instruction book. Can I tell you that kids did come with an instruction book? They really did. A lot of you are holding it in your laps right now. We have an instruction book for life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a... Yeah, we have an instruction book. We have an instruction book. Walking with Jesus means listening to his instructions. Listening to what he's saying. Why? Because he wants to walk with you and he wants to take you somewhere cool. The Garden of Eden was cool. The Garden of Eden was better than everywhere else on earth. The Garden of Eden was a special place, and God took him there. Number two, I want you to see this. Walking with Jesus means learning to enjoy what God has given you. Walking with Jesus means learning to enjoy what God has given you. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, so they're in the garden. They're in the garden. I want you to keep, I want you to dress it. And now here's what I want you to do. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. That's good news. Look at all this. Look at all this. Eat it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. See, walking with Jesus, being a Christian, Avion, being a Christian is not about the thou shalt nots. But so often that's what we make it about. Being a Christian is not about being against everything. Being a Christian is not about being against the politicians and being against Target and being against Starbucks and being against the Dodgers because they let that group come in and, and, and being against the NFL because they kneeled and being against... That's not what Christianity is. Christianity and God is not about be against, be against, be against. Here's God. Here's God. And this is what God says. God says, I have something good for you. I have something great for you. And I want you to enjoy it. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound good? That's Christianity. But in order to hear that message, in order to hear that message, you need to understand this. You need to understand this. You need to learn how to recognize the voice of God. You need to learn how to recognize his voice. Jesus said in John 10, he said, My sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He's got good news for you. And his true sheep, they hear his voice. But how do I know if it's God? This is how. You read his word. And the more you read his word, the more, Kelsey, the more you'll recognize his voice. And you'll learn to recognize his voice. My dogs, they come when I call them. 
except for very bad doc. We have four dogs in my house. We have Shadow, we have Marshmallow, oh, I'm sorry, we have Shadow, we have Buttercup, we have Bad Dog and Very Bad Dog. <laughs> That's what I call them. The, last, the first two dogs, we trained, they were disciplined, they're good. The last two dogs, my wife ruined. <laughs> and I seriously, I call them Bad Dog and Very Bad Dog. And they come. When I say bad dog, marshmallow. And Belle gets excited. Very bad dog. <laughs> Why? They know my voice. They know my voice. And they know I'm good to them. I give them treats and I give them belly rubs. Do you know that God is good? He's good, and he wants good for you. Walking with Jesus is fun, but you have to learn how to recognize his voice. Not only do you need to learn how to recognize his voice, but you have to read your, his word to learn how to recognize his voice, but you need to read his word to learn how much God has given to you. He said this, he said, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Look at everything that I've given to you. You can do this. It's not, don't go here, don't go here, don't go here. There, there are some of those. In fact, we're going to read about some, some, some of those instructions and things. But for the most part, it's, look at this. Do this. Go here. Dwell on that which is good. Dwell on that which is good. A couple, like last week, I think. Last week, um, um, I was thinking about biscuits. Anyone like biscuits? Like biscuits, yeah? All right. I like biscuits. How many of you can tell that I like biscuits? You can tell. I, li I like biscuits. Uh, and I was thinking about biscuits. I don't even know why I was thinking about biscuits. I think I was just thinking about them because I'm fat. And I think about things like biscuits. Uh, and I was thinking about biscuits. And then I was thinking about my wife's biscuits because my wife makes incredible biscuits. And I said to my wife, I said, in fact, I think I said to my kids, mom's going to make biscuits. And mom said, I'm not making biscuits. And for the next couple of days, I was like, Mom's making biscuits. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Mom's making biscuits. And she's like, I'm not. She said, you don't need biscuits. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> like what? She hasn't been walking with Jesus. No, <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. And for the next couple of days, we played with that, and I joked about that. And I, I kept talking about how She's not making me biscuits. In fact, for the next few days after that, I told her, Psh, you don't even make me biscuits. Psh, you don't even make me biscuits. When she would ask for something, rub my feet. Psh, you didn't even make me biscuits. I'm going to rub your feet. So many Christians live their lives that way. They live their lives thinking about everything they can't do. I can't go here. I can't go there. I can't do this. I can't do that. And they stop looking at every tree of the garden that they can eat. We buy into this philosophy that the grass is greener on the other side. But a wise person said, the grass is greener where you water it. Christianity is not about the thou shalt nots. God's good. Walking with Jesus means learning to enjoy what God has given you. But then number three, there is a warning. There's a warning. Number three, walking with Jesus means listening to his warnings because he does warn you and by the way too much of a good thing is not good for you the truth is i don't need biscuits I say what do you need broccoli i need broccoli walking with jesus means listening to his warnings look what he says here in verse 17 it says but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Thou shalt not eat of it. You can eat of all these trees. All these trees. Enjoy them. There's apples. There's kumquats. There's pineapples. Bananas. There's all sorts of awesome fruits. Incredible. 
But there's this one tree. There's this one tree. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest of it, eatest thereof, thou shalt surely, what? Die. You're going to die. Death was something that had not been introduced. Death was something that was not supposed to be part of this world. Death was something that happened after they didn't heed God's warning. Walking with Jesus does mean listening to his warnings. Walking with Jesus includes reading his word to identify what is not good for me. To identify what is not good for me. And he does tell you what's not good for you. He does. And we'll talk about some of those things in the next couple of weeks. But he does. He warns you. You read Proverbs 7. He warns you about a woman. About a certain kind of fellows. He warns us about a certain kind of woman that we need to stay away from. He warns you. You read the book of Proverbs. Ladies, and he warns about men that are drunkards. And men that are given a much wine. He warns about those things. There are things that he warns us about. And walking with Jesus does mean reading his word to identify what is not good for me. Reading his word, it also means reading his word to learn, watch this, the consequences of sin. God identifies the consequences. When he gives a warning, he says, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. He said, if you eat of that fruit, you will die. The devil lied to them, remember? Thou shalt not surely die. God knows that. He, in fact, he knows that in the day that you eat of that, you're going to be like him. You're going to know right from wrong. And he made it sound appealing. He made it sound good. But walking with Jesus, when they were walking with Jesus, they heard his warnings. They heard his warnings. That's what walking with Jesus is. How do I live a life that shines? Well, you walk with Jesus. How do I walk with Jesus? Well, it means listening to his instructions by reading his word. Walking with Jesus means learning to enjoy what God has given to you by reading his word. Walking with Jesus means listening to his warnings by what? Reading his word. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? By listening to his words. Why? Because these are the words of Jesus in his book. When we talk about walking with Jesus, we are talking about reading your Bible and praying. God talks to you. You talk to him. This is called having a relationship. That's what it's called. You talk to one another. It's about walking with Jesus is about having a relationship with God. Now catch this. I'm, I'm winding up. This is it. This is the end. There's literally like four lines here and then a few more lines on the other page and I'm done. So catch this. The rest of the series won't help you shine until you first decide, first decide to develop the habit of walking with Jesus. Axel, it's a habit. It's a habit until you decide to create a habit in your life wherein you decide, I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to pray every day. So when did you start doing that, Jose? I started doing that when I was your age. When I was 16. When I was 16 years old, I said, really, I'm going to read my Bible and I'm going to pray every day. Did I mess up? All the time. All the time. How did you know what to pray for? I didn't. Can I tell you this? I didn't know what to pray for. I heard of people spending a long time in prayer, and I was like, how do they do that? I didn't know. So I just got proactive about it. I said, I want to do it. I want to pray. I heard that it's good for you, and God told me I should pray, so I want to pray. So this is what I did. I went to my youth pastor. a guy named Kyle Haynes. Went to my youth pastor here at Liberty Baptist Church, and I said, will you print me off a teen roster? That's what I did. True story. So would you print me a teen roster? He said, for what? I said, because I want to start praying for everybody. And he said, okay. And he printed me a teen roster. We had a big youth group, like 40, 50 teenagers. Now you have like 100, 120 teenagers. 
And every day what I did, Michael, this is what I did every day. I just went name by name. Lord, I pray for Josh. You know, he's dumb. He needs help. Josh is my best friend. Lord, I pray for Charity. She has to live with Josh. Help her. Lord, I pray for Brianna. I pray for Andrew. It's the Brennigers. Pray for Victor Berrigan. Any of you remember Miss LaRose? Glenda? Pray for Glenda. Pray for April. And I just started naming their names. I say, what'd you pray for? I just, God take care of them and bless them. Help them to do right. That's all I knew how to pray. By the way, that's still what I pray. And that's just what I did. Why? Because God said to pray. So I just did it. You don't need to be taught how to talk to people. You just talk. God, this is what I want. God, this is what I need. Lord, and I just started asking for things. I just started asking. That's what I did. The rest of the series won't help you shine until you first decide to develop a habit for yourself of walking with Jesus. This isn't new information for you. This isn't new. Like, I'm not giving you anything new. And in a room this size, there are undoubtedly, undoubtedly already several of you that already have this habit in your lives. There are probably a lot of you that already read your Bible every day. And so you're like, I know, I'm doing this already. There are probably a lot of you that already pray every single day. And that's great. That's wonderful. I'm glad you do. But because, because of that, I want, I want to give you this warning. I want, to, I want to teach you this thing. Because of that, that, Aiden, will you turn the TVs off? Because of that, there's a phenomenon that, a phenomenon that happens. When you're in a room this size, and there are several people scattered about that are doing this already, there's something weird that happens. There's something strange that, 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 that happens. If I, if I ask you to help me, Today, you can go stand by, by the light switches. Um, here, I want to ask two people to come up here. I want to ask Mackenzie and Noemi to help me. Help me. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. They're going to help me out here. Come on. Come on up. Stand right here. Stand right here on the stage. Right here. Right next to each other. This is Noemi. This is Mackenzie. I just want to illustrate this for you. Mackenzie and Noemi are both in the eighth grade, right? Right, both, both in the eighth grade. Um, they're both believers, right? You've, you've trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. You've trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Both believers. They both have the light within them. Isn't that cool? They both have the light within them. The light source is there. The Holy Spirit lives in them. They both have Christian parents, Right? Your parents are Christians, right? Yeah, okay. He's the Spanish pastor, if you don't know. Uh, um, here. So you, you, you both have Christian parents. Um, you both have parents that, uh, that have taught you to read your Bibles and to pray on a regular basis, right? You both have parents that um, do things like play Christian music in your home. Uh, you both have parents that, um, uh, um, that take you to church, Right? Right? Like, is it an option? Is it ever an option to skip church? No. Is it ever an option to skip church? No. no, it's it's not. It's not an option. Dad, can we not? No. What are you? What are you? Are you kidding? <laughs> no. You know. So that was Pastor Ruiz that does that. Uh, so so th 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 they're both, and you're both a part of a youth group. You're both a part of this youth group, right? Right. You're 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 both in here. You're in you're in the same place in your life as each other. You're both in the eighth grade. You're both believers. You both go to church. You both have parents that love you, that are Christians, that are believers. You're both in this youth group, right? You're in the same place. Literally, you're in the same place. Here's what happens. Mackenzie, or not Mackenzie, Noemi, will you hold this? All right? This is the light. When I ask you to turn it on, you just have to pull it down. That's it, and all the way down, okay? All right, hold that out in front of you. Here's what happens. Let's say one of these believers is reading her Bible every day. Let's say one of these believers 
is praying every day. One of these believers is walking with Jesus every day. And let's say the other believer, this is just for illustration, let's say the other believer has Christian parents and goes to a church where they teach her to read her Bible and has parents that encourage her to read her Bible and pray. But let's say she's not. She's not. Now this happens in this room. Watch this. Will you guys help me? Will you turn the lights off? Hit the lights. Hit all the lights. All right. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Noemi, do me a favor. Turn the light on. Okay, now watch. 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 Because I, I got to wrap up. I got to wrap up. I took extra time doing extra stuff because he said I had 45 minutes. And now my time is up. Now watch. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, right? So Noemi's light is shining, and because it's the true light, it's not the Justin Timberlake it light, okay? It's the true light. It's the light of Jesus. Catch this, because it's the light of Jesus. It doesn't just illuminate her path, but because Mackenzie is in the same room with her, and because Mackenzie's in the same place with her, catch this, because they're in this youth group together, even though Mackenzie has no real walk with God. She can fake it. She can fake it. And she can come to this room week after week and hear message after message. And she can sit in that sanctuary and hear the preaching. And she can nod her head at the right times and laugh at the right times. And she knows who to hang out with and all those things. But if she doesn't have a daily walk with God, she's a fake. And right now, right now, it's okay and she's safe because she's in the same place as her friend Noemi. And her friend Noemi is walking with Jesus. But catch this. When she graduates and when she's not in this youth group anymore and Noemi's not there, She'll be lost. You guys can turn the lights on. Guys, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Go ahead. You can sit. Catch this. Catch this. When they leave the youth group, when you leave, Avion, when you leave, if you don't have a walk with Jesus, you're going to walk into a world that's dark. And you're going to be lost. If you go to a Christian school, thank God for it, but it will not help you succeed. If you're homeschooling, you're with parents that love you, thank God for it, but it will not help you succeed. If you go to public school like I did when I was in high school, if you're not walking with Jesus, you will feel lost for six hours a day every single day. And the phenomenon that happens is there are so many people in this room that are faking it. And you're living in someone else's light. And Jesus is good. And because he's good, he lets you walk in that light because he wants you to develop that own light. But you've got to develop for yourself. I want to ask you tonight to make one of three decisions. One of three decisions, and then I'm going to call Mr. Halverson up. If you're already walking with Jesus, if you say, I'm already reading my Bible, I'm already praying, I'm already doing that on a daily basis. You say, that's me. I want you to make this decision. I want you to decide tonight. I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to start asking my friend if they're walking with Jesus. Because I love my friend. Would you take it that step further? I want to ask you to make that decision, because you don't want your friend to get lost. Number two, if you've been living off the light of others, if you're in here and you say, man, I've been a phony, I've been a fraud, this message was not to kick you. This message was not to put you down. 
Would you make a decision tonight to say, okay, I'll start. I'll start. I can read a proverb a day. I can read a psalm a day. I can read a few chapters a day. And I'll start praying. I'll just start asking for things. And I'll start that. And number three, if you've never met the light, if you don't know Jesus, let me encourage you tonight to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Lord, be with these teenagers tonight. I pray, God, that they would make the decision that you would have them make. Would you pray right now? I want to ask you to come forward. But would you pray? Would you make a decision? Make a decision for God even now. Lord, be with these teenagers. Protect them, watch over them. Show them how much you love them, how much you care about them, how much you have for them. And I pray, God, that we would decide to shine, to light the world with our lives. I ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.